Have you ever felt that the prices for items these days keep on increasing? Oil, alcohol, food, estate, bills, everything. This is caused by inflation that is happening all around us. Inflation is the rate of increase in prices over a given period of time. This usually occurs when prices rise due to an increase in production cost and raw materials. Others see this as a positive factor because it boosts consumer demand and consumption, thus driving economic growth. But some also believe that inflation is meant to keep deflation in check, which others think is a drag on the economy. In this video, I'm going to show you what the billionaire and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway has to say about the current situation we're in right now. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button as we proceed. It's quite fascinating that there's a lot of inflation. Sellers are boosting prices and others are doing the same. It's thus becoming accepted that inflation is a major concern for everyone right now, including individuals, businesses, investors, and politicians. We'll go over a hierarchy of different investing categories and how they rank in periods of inflation, all according to Warren Buffett, who at 91 years old, knows a thing or two about inflation because he's lived through it. Cash is the worst investment to make during an inflationary period. Cash is trash, according to fellow billionaire Ray Dalio, who has been vocal about his dislike of cash, making him and Warren Buffett investors who dislike holding cash during inflation. This is because during times of inflation, cash that you have sitting in a savings account or in your dresser at home is becoming worth less and less every day, every week, every month, and every year. That is why you as an investor should ponder your investment returns which are referred to as real terms. Calculating your real return is simple. Assuming that 10% of your investments are returned to you annually, you need to subtract out the impact of inflation. If the impact of inflation is 7% and your investment return that year is 10%, then your real return is 3% which is truly lackluster, right? Because the return on storing cash is virtually zero, it's at the bottom of the ladder. Holding cash over a long period of time allows the impacts of inflation to work against you. In this inflation hierarchy, situated just above cash is fixed interest rate bonds. These investments are often thought to be quite safe by traditional investing wisdom, but Buffett would argue that they aren't actually all that safe when inflation is taken into account. Let me give you a situation. The current yield on a US government bond for over 10 years is around 1.8 as of making this video which means that if you bought a 10-year government bond today, you'd effectively lock in a 1.8% annual return for the next decade. If inflation averages 4% over the next decade, which isn't a stretch given that the most recent report on inflation was at 7%, then with a 4% inflation, you'd have an annual real return of negative 2.2 after inflation. This is truly better than just having cash stagnantly in your wallet, but it's still far from the best and not what would have been the ideal return that you'd want. If you like what you've seen so far, don't forget to give this channel a like and a subscription, which will truly be delightful. Now, there are two sides to inflation. Those who do not profit from it are mainly those that are in debt with a fixed rate like in government bonds, while on the other hand, those who borrow money in a long-term structure at a fixed rate are winners. A person that uses mortgages to purchase a property back in December 2020 is the perfect example. Let's say that I was able to buy a house and I was able to deal with a 30-year fixed rate mortgage at 2.8%. This means that my interest rate is going to stay exactly the same for the next 30 years, regardless of inflation or deflation. This is like a shelter from all the rain during inflation because as inflation continues to eat away the value of mortgage debt every month and every year, it makes every single dollar worthless and I get to recompense my debt in loans with devalued dollars. In Germany, they even give you your mortgage back at the end, which is very interesting. Next up on this hierarchy is referred to as unproductive assets by Warren Buffett, which encompasses precious metals such as gold, silver, and the like. During a period of inflation, owning these minerals isn't so bad because in a directly proportional relationship, as prices for everything else rises, so do these properties. In theory, that is. However, these assets are unproductive, thus it is unlikely for your purchasing power to increase. Now imagine, if all the gold in the world is to be accumulated, it would most likely make a cube of about 67 feet in length, width, and height. That same humongous cube could be worth about $7 trillion in today's market, which is probably about one-third of all the value of all the stocks in the United States. So if you were to be given the power to decide, would you choose to own a block of gold that you can't do anything with but sit and shine beautifully in a corner? 
making you feel like Midas or would you rather have seven trillion dollars which can be used for a billion acres of farmland in the US. These farmland are valued at about two and a half trillion dollars and half of the continental United States is farmland. You could have about seven Exxon mobiles and a trillion dollars of money laying around with it. Would you have a shining, shimmering, splendid block of towering gold or would you rather have seven trillion dollars that you can freely spend? Comment down below. Before we proceed to what Warren Buffett has to say about this, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. For Buffett, it is much more practical to have all the farmland in the country producing cotton, corn, soybeans, and an extra trillion dollars that have a gigantic piece of gold. The fourth one on our inflation hierarchy is what Buffett calls productive assets. It's a well-known fact that Warren Buffett made his fortune by purchasing stocks here and there and buying out entire businesses, but according to him, not all businesses are created equal. Average businesses which encompass productive assets require a lot of additional capital to keep operating. Sadly, not all businesses survive during inflation. Company income may increase a fair amount over time, but this also means that more and more dollars are being placed into the business to make it stable in this very volatile market. It is to be noted that businesses that require you to place more money on the table don't give you great profit. A U.S. company called United Rentals is the world's largest equipment rental company where they buy heavy-duty equipment used in construction projects such as trucks, bulldozers, and portable restrooms for other companies to rent for the duration of their construction. These types of equipment obviously do not last that very long and must be replaced every few years. Let's say that a couple of trucks are priced at $1 million and the company rents them for $1.2 million. This will then generate a profit of $200,000 but if we were to have a situation with a 20% increase in the inflation rate, that would make purchasing price of these trucks to be $1.2 million with the same renting price. What's happening here is that the company isn't able to take money away from the business in the form of profit as it has to be poured right back to keep the business afloat. Now, United Rentals is a great company, but this example demonstrates the challenge that capital-intensive business faced during an inflation period. Remember how in the previous example we had a business that spent $1 million to buy trucks? What if a friend by the name of Paul were to use that same amount to develop software instead of buying equipment? If Paul were to make $1.2 million in his very first year, his profit is $200,000 which is great, and it gets even greater even if there's a 20% inflation for the next year. Why? Because Paul would be able to charge 20% more for this software. The $1.2 million he had in the sale would turn into $1.44 million due to the inflation. Moreover, he doesn't have to reinvest money back into the business as he already has the software, all while spending only a minimal amount of money to upgrade and maintain it. Paul's software business is an example of a capital light business with minimal spending. This means that he can take out his profit and invest it into other businesses. As an investor, finding a business with low capital requirements is ideal, where you don't have to constantly reinvest large sums of money back into the business to grow it. These companies mostly have strong brands such as Apple, Coca-Cola, or Buffett's very own, or invest in a business with low capital requirements that don't rely on owning many physical assets such as Facebook. Microsoft, or other technologically focused companies. Ideally, you should invest in companies that are able to easily increase prices for their goods. For our professional individuals such as doctors, dentists, lawyers, mechanics, accountants, and many others, the best investment is to invest in yourself. Make yourself extremely valuable to other people that you get to charge whatever you want for yourself and your customers will still be happy to oblige. Inflation may be a positive thing to some, and an unwanted situation for others, but what I can suggest to you is to see the light in every circumstance that you're in. Do more research and get ready to dip your toes into this field as you grow. Alright, hope you enjoyed watching the video. Once again, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next video.